Okay, so welcome to this control course. My name is Didier Dumur. Uh, maybe you have already seen me at the, during the first week as the program director of Centrale Supélec. But here I'm here as one of the eight professors in control because you have eight tracks uh, in parallel. The only one in English. <laughs> so I guess the attendance is uh, an international one. Uh, with many countries. I've seen some from Italy here, maybe from Brazil. Yeah, we're good. Spain, China, yeah. Others? France, of course. <laughs> there seems to be someone. <laughs> okay, so it's a pleasure uh, to uh, deliver this course to you. The, if you consider uh, the different chapters of the book. You have eight chapters. See, oh, it's, here is seven, but Observers is on chapter number eight. Uh, we will start with these two chapters right now until the break, and I will mainly use the slides just as an introduction. What is the, the history or the purpose of control? What are the main concepts of control? And then after the break, we will start with the analysis of properties of feedback systems. And in the book, you have one chapter in continuous time and one chapter in discrete time. <coughs> but these are mainly the same concepts. So during the lectures, I will merge both and have in parallel continuous and discrete time. Just in the book, it's separated here, but it's easier for me and easier for you to understand the parallel between continuous time and discrete time as well. So these are analyses where we want to define the properties of feedback systems. And based on these concepts, we have all the tools after that to design control laws. So the, the final goal of this module is the design of control strategies to improve the behavior of system. That's what I will show you. So this will be done First in continuous time, then for digital control, and finally with state feedback control. Okay, so this is the, the scope of all this. So right now, what we will consider as an introduction first is to try to give some definition of what is automatic control. Maybe you have already some ideas in mind, uh, just to look at what uh, is basically <coughs> the definition, what is currently the, the one you find. Some historical data, different phases for uh, automatic control, and the aims and motivations of uh, control. And then we will continue with the structure of feedback systems. Based on that, first definition of automatic control. If you look at the first time it appeared in journals or uh, some uh, written form. It was in 1914 uh, in the Royal Academy of Science Journal. That was the really first time you have this uh, definition of automatic control. Even if in the past, before that, you have some realization of control system, but it was more intuitive rather than completely defined and written. So based on that, uh, the definition in dictionaries is, first you have the definition of automation. Automation is the global uh, notion which aims is to execute in a complete automatic way different tasks without human assistance. This is the definition of automation and this is really huge. You may have some uh, definition or sort of application in industry, of course, but uh, in scientific tasks, administrative matters, very, very huge and broad uh, <coughs> definition. And among this, part of automation is automatic control. Automatic control is more dedicated to the study of science and techniques, which are uh, of automation, of course, uh, which will give you the methodologies, and the strategies, and the techniques to design and realize automatic systems. So automation is the concept, and automatic control, these are the tools you will define. And one word which is important is systems. Uh, you know here the curriculum is complex systems. So you are now 
in the way to control complex systems. You have learned how to model this complex system last year, uh, how to look at the signals within this, this system. Now, uh, what we want to do is to improve the behavior of the control systems. This is the main goal of this. So I will go back to the definition of what is the system and further what is the control system with the controller. So automatic control, these are the tools, the science, the techniques to define and to do that. More into, de into details, it's a set of mathematical theories or techniques, and we will see most of them, uh, the basic ones, related to decision and control. So some important notion, to control system, you need the model, of course, I will go back to that, but you will have to some extent to take decision to control the system. And to take decision, that is the, what you can do as a human. When you look at the system manually, you take decision and you uh, obtain the behavior and you look at the result and so on. Now, as I told before, we want to um, here to do that without human assistance. <coughs> so the, the algorithm or the strategy you will define must be able to replace human and take decision instead of human. So this is an important part, decision and control of systems. And automatic control, when you're in industry, you have a problem to solve, uh, <coughs> to control whatever, uh, a motor, a plane, or uh, an installation, uh, a bioreactor, whatever you want. You always have three steps, three main steps. First one is modeling, and it's a very important one. Because if your model is not correct, then the control will not work. So modeling, you need to spend maybe at least 50% of the time dedicated to the study to have a good model. You have to identify the parameters. You have to check the validity of the model. Uh, if your system is nonlinear, you will need uh, an approach, linear one, and so on. So that's really an important part modeling and we will always start with that during the practice session during the lab work you need to have a model and then based on this model you need to analyze the performance of your system without control what can this system do and of course it is where it works then okay that's good <laughs> you have finished but it's never the case fortunately so you then you have to improve and based on these results of the analysis phase the last one is the control. So the definition, you will learn m several control strategies and according to the system, you will have to choose the best one or the most adapted one to your system. That's the goal. So modeling, analysis and control of dynamical system. So system, what is it? A system, if you have model, maybe you have some uh, uh, knowledge about that from last year or from previous studies in your countries, uh, a system. Uh, what inside you need to model something here. System, you have some inputs and you have some outputs. Okay? Uh, what to do? A system is never just a box like this. In fact, well, it, you model this by a, a box or several boxes. Uh, just to have a representation. But basically a system is a combination of several parts which together will provide or will execute something. And you will obtain a, uh, you will obtain a specified result. Uh, so this is a system globally. It's um, a certain amount of objects that are working together to provide some result or to execute some tasks, to cooperate to realize something, and they are characterized by some inputs, as I mentioned here. When you have some inputs, you can act on these inputs to change the behavior of your system. You will send some signal to your system so that it will react to that. So these are some inputs <coughs> to provide the system with information from outside. And then you look at the result, and the result are these outputs you will look at the output and uh, you will illustrate the response of the system 
according to the input you have applied to it. In English, you can find a system or process with the same meaning. You have both terms, I can use both ones, uh, process or system. Later on, I will go detail a bit more of this because you have some input here. You, I said I will apply some signals and look at the results. So this model here are the signals that I will monitor, I will use them. But you have other signals applied to your system which are called disturbances that you cannot, man you cannot uh, control this one. They are coming from outside and you have to reject this. So that's part of the problem. I will detail that later on. Okay, so these are from some generalities in control. You have already seen three phases here, modeling, analysis, and then control. If you go further, we want to replay, re replicate or to replace the human. So this, uh, this is the goal of automatic control. In fact, in control, you have three phases, and all is based on this. That's the concept of feedback system. Feedback system is something that may be really new for you. If you were there last year, you start with the modeling in, uh, during the second session, uh, sequence of the first year, you have a modeling uh, dedicated to modeling aspect. You model what is in the box. Okay, now you need to control this. What is in the box and how to control this? There is three fundamental phases. First one, and I consider the skiing man here, it's not really the good period to ski, but you can think about that for the future. Uh, when you're, what you are, are you doing when you ski? You look at where you are, and look at <coughs> the environment, so you observe. First is observation, you observe. And based on this observation, what, uh, what will you do? You will analyze. For example, you want to go this way, you are here, you observe, so this is done by your eyes. You look at the environment here, <coughs> and according to this, you say, well, I'm here, I want to go there. So you analyze the situation, and you have an algorithm treatment, which is in the brain, and you will decide something based on the observation. So this first phase is observation, then you have analysis and algorithm make tra treatment, that's the brain, and you take decision. This decision is sent to your legs, and you decide to move on the left, on the right, or to continue. This is the action. So three phases, observation, analysis, and decision, and action. Okay? And you start again. You have moved your legs, you see the results, you, you observe again, you take another decision, you move your legs again, and so on. This is the effect of feedback, you see? Because with the result of the observation that's coming from you, from your system, with the result of your observation, you analyze where you are and you compare with where you want to go. And based on this, you take action. This is feedback. And this is the main concept of control. Control is based on the feedback strategy. What you have learned up to now is open loop without feedback. That's the definition of system. You model a system and that's, that was finished. Now you will consider this system within a loop which is the feedback <coughs> control. So have this in mind, observation, analysis, decision and action. <coughs> we'll go back to that <laughs> later on. Well, control is, if you look now, in the application fields of control. This control is everywhere. You have control everywhere in many, many domains. I've written some here, but there are maybe some more, 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 uh, much more fields of application. In fact, control is, on one side, is the result of two blocks. First, you need theoretical tools and coming from mathematics and computer science. So you need some mathematical tools we will see together. On the other side, you need to implement this. 
and implement this. That's computer engineering. These are embedded electronics. If you consider uh, electric vehicles or autonomous vehicles, you need to embed all control in the vehicle. So that's uh, part of the implementation. And if you mix both aspects, you have control. Control need, need both. M now, more and more, because all is digital control. So you need computer. You need to embed all inside the system. Uh, if you want to have a, a, um, an unmanned vehicle uh, flying, you need to embed all inside. Uh, the same for a plane and so on. So it's embedded in the system. And you may have some application in robotics, some application in production engineering fields, and now more and more some application in economy, application in neurosciences, biotechnologies, chemistry, and whatever. You have many, many, of course, aerospace, automotive industry, all transportation systems. It's everywhere because system itself, okay, it works, but maybe performances are not correct, your system may be unstable, and you need to improve the performance, and that's everywhere. Just a few examples. The application in the transportation field. Here you have the, an example of the magnetic levitation train. It's coming from Germany, you have some implementation in China, I think, already. And um, the design of this Airbus uh, A380, you have this, without control, this plane cannot fly. And many, many planes cannot fly without control. They are unstable systems. So you need to improve the behavior. You need to stabilize your system, <coughs> and you need to provide good performances. And this is the, the goal of control. You have some application in the medical fields. For example, this uh, system, which is the cardiovascular imaging system. It's coming from General Electric, just an ex and as an example, but there are many others. What is the problem in control here? When you take pictures radio from your here, lying here, and you, we have to move the, 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 the arc, the, la the, the part of the robot here, to take the pictures. And this is flexible structures, and you move it very fast. And the problem is that you may have oscillation, or fle it's a flexible structure. So without control, you will oscillate a lot. And if you oscillate a lot, then the pictures will be completely fuzzy. And without the resolution, you cannot exploit the, problem, the, the, the pictures. So you have to provide the the guy here making the picture with something which is really stable and you have to design control laws that will reject the oscillations and will stabilize with good performance. This is a problem in robotics now because you have more and more robots which are very flexible because they are their mass is very small so they are moving very fast, very flexible, but they may have many many oscillations. So you have to provide very, very robust control laws. Another example is a chirurgical robot, Da Vinci, I think you may, may have uh, heard about this, it's a very famous one, when you, you can uh, operate, uh, just help uh, moving some part here. I mean, the, the man here is very, uh, it's very it's, I think it's much more easier to do that uh, with the robot than before. At least you can have some help from the robot. So the medical field, it's an, it's an increasing demand in control. Uh, and of course, I st stop like this, but you can find many, many others um, in, in industry, in uh, <coughs> any transportation, in automotive industry, and so on. Uh, back to some historical data now. In fact, the concept of control is a very old one. It started in uh, what we call the prehistory of control uh, from antiquity to the middle of the 19th century. And what is really interesting to see is that you can find some clever inventors in antiquity who design control systems without any computers, of course, without any electronics. 
just very clever invention. Uh, the most famous one, maybe, is the water clock of Ketsibios <laughs> here. Uh, it's an, e an example of levels control system. This one. And you will see already the concept of block diagram that will be one of the more uh, useful representations for us in control. What is the, the goal here? The goal is uh, to design, to move this rod with a linear movement so that you obtain an image of the time here. If the velocity is constant, then the displacement here is proportional to time. And looking at the displacement, you have an image of the time. That's the water clock. Okay? So, um, to do that, to obtain a constant velocity here so that you have a, a, a um, linear movement of the rod, you need to control the height here. That's what is represented here. And controlling the height here, it's uh, proportional to the feed rate coming in the, in, the, in the tank here. It's the square root of, and you have an image of the, the height. So if you need to have a constant feed rate, which is D, then you need to have a constant value of the height in this tank. So the problem is now I'm here, how can I manage to have a constant value here? And what was very clever at that time is that imagine they have no means other than some piece of wood here. So you have a piece of wood just at the top of the, of the, the water part. You have another tank here. And if the level start to decrease, then the, the, part, the wood part will go down then you will bring more water inside and then the level will increase <coughs> and you go back to the value you want. Vice versa, if the level is too high, then this will stop here, you will decrease the flow coming and the level will go down. And then you regulate to the level you want. And this, you see, you start to see the notion of feedback. You measure the height here, you compare to the one you want, which will give you the correct velocity and so on. And if this one is not the same, then you will change something. And that's the part of control you will do. Here it was very, very uh, intuitive notion, but it works, in fact. Of course, it's not so easy to manipulate, but it works. And uh, you have already this notion of feedback, even if you have no mathematical theories behind this. So that's just an example. You have other examples, uh, such as the, the Watt, uh, the Watt uh, system. You have one, it is in, in the book, you can find it in the book. So these are, that was very, very famous uh, example in the past. This was the first um, period, let's say, from, of control. Uh, the second period is the, the classical theory, and that we will uh, consider uh, part of this together. It started at the middle of the 18th century, and it's based on the feedback theory, and that's the one we will consider. And the Boole algebra, I just mentioned that, but it's outside the scope of this course. Um, here I gave you some famous names, I'm sure you know about them already, Laplace. Maybe not good uh, souvenir about that, but Laplace transform. Uh, the Boole algebra, the feedback theory from, uh, by Maxwell, the Roos criterion, I will mention this later on in the next course, uh, next lecture, the Hovitz polynomial, these are related to stability study. Uh, then you have uh, more work on the stability uh, of the world governor and so on. And this part, this is really what we will do at the beginning. This is the frequency study of feedback system. If you just consider transfer function as representation, then you will, we will use these tools, uh, Nyquist, Bode diagram, Black diagram, Nyquist plot, and so on. So you may have this in mind already. These are the most uh, famous diagrams you have in terms of frequency representations, the Bode, the Nyquist, the, the Black-Nichols representation. 
And this is, uh, it was the middle, uh, well, sorry, before the middle of the 20th century. And since that, in this classical theory, nothing new. What was new then? And that was the third period, that's the modern or advanced control. It started at the, in the beginning of the, the 50s, and that was induced by the development of computers. Then the, the natural move is to go to um, the idea of uh, digital control, uh, state-based representation, of course, useful for multivariable systems. You may have, uh, maybe you have heard about the Kalman filter, which is one of the most, the, the, the famous uh, filter you use to extract noise from a signal. Uh, it's m widely used in industry. Uh, development of nonlinear systems, even if we will not consider nonlinear system during this course, we have already many things to consider <laughs> with linear systems, so it's enough. But we ha you have some methodologies for nonlinear systems as well. Uh, analysis of discrete time systems that we will start uh, this year, but if you continue in the future in the, ma in the major of control engineering, you will learn more about uh, digital control of discrete time systems. <coughs> Phenomenon of random phenomena, uh, again Kalman or, uh, or Debussy and so on. So you see, um, this is not finished. If you go to <coughs> workshops or conferences right now in control, maybe not each day, but in each conference you have some new theories coming, maybe some slight improvement from a previous one, but it's still really under progress and uh, you, you have uh, many advanced control strategies that are implemented due to the power of computers. If the computer, are, uh, if they are more powerful, then you can go further and implement more complex structures and have some more optimization techniques behind this. So we will mainly focus on these tools here and on the idea of state space representation. That was the, that is the main focus of this, uh, of this course. Finally, what are the aims and the motivations of uh, control of uh, this, uh, this uh, course. As I said before, we want to realize automatic system. We want to replace human action. Uh, to do that, you need to design something. That's the control part, the intelligent part of, uh, of the system, which will execute something without human assistance, as I said. <coughs> and why? Maybe you already heard at the radio that we want to replace humans, that will not be not good for unemployment and so on. But in fact, that may be true, not true. <laughs> what is sure is that you are able to realize something with control that first cannot be realized without the help of computers. I mean, only human cannot do that. So for example, um, this one, these operations are too complex, awkward, or to be executed by humans. Landing something on the moon is completely impossible due to accuracy or whatever without uh, the help of computers, so without control. A human without control cannot do that. The same for planes. Or, if you see another aspect is you can replace the human for tasks which are really uh, repetitive without interest <coughs> and so on. Replace uh, automatic gearbox, household appliance, just something you can do with control that will replace humans. It's just not interesting to do that. Or you have a guarantee of accuracy. The control provides a very, very um, important accuracy that cannot be reached just by the human. Your eye cannot be so accurate that what you can do with control. If you want to control missiles or to have the, the landing on the moon, you need to be, of course, very, very accurate. And that cannot be done without control. And you can improve and have a guarantee of stability. As I told before, if you want to control just a plane, it cannot fly. It's an unstable system. 
you need control to stabilize and to provide good performance. So that stabilization of unstable planes or whatever. There, another example, you, you will have a platform during lab works working like this. Uh, imagine you have an inver and it's completely uh, not useful in industry, but from like, an academic point of view, it's really interesting to control. You have an, unsta an, uh, an unstable pendulum, an inverted pendulum. So you have a cart moving and you have a pendulum like this. This is an unstable system. If you do not control this system, what, well, the natural behavior, it will fall down. If you move the cart, even if you do not move, it will fall down, okay? So the idea is implement a control structure, which is not so easy to do, so that if you move the cart, if you move this, it will remain in the vertical position. So this is an unstable system without control, and with feedback, you will control so that it will remain in this way. So this is one example, which is, as I said, of no interest in industry, but just as, uh, as the concept of feedback. So this is what I mean by this. So you see, control, uh, the goal of control is quite different according to the task you want to reach. Accuracy, doing something you cannot do by yourself, avoid a really uh, boring task to do, or uh, stabilize a system and do uh, something, use a system that cannot be used without control. And you are more and more in this perspective now. You, we are considering more and more uh, complex systems. Take the example of smart grids. You have uh, electric networks. Now you will have more and more uh, renewable energy producers connecting to this system. Without control, it's difficult to manage because at any time, you may have a producer connecting or disconnecting, depending on the condition and energy you can provide. How to manage with the stability of the network? You need control for that. And it's even more complex, that's what we will see together, it's part of hybrid systems. But anyway, that's the same, be the same uh, notion, the same concept. Uh, you need to, to stabilize, to control this, because uh, of uh, intermittent connection of producers to the network. The same for uh, smart buildings. If you want to control uh, buildings with uh, intelligence inside, embedded inside, you need control <coughs> just to, uh, to, to try to connect the good, uh, the good source of energy at the appropriate time and so on. So you see, you are dealing with more and more complex system and control is the crucial notion to work with in this, con in this complex system. Now, there are in fact two main kinds of automatic systems. We will consider only one here. And you must be very careful with that. The first one is what we call sequential logical systems. I think you have already have some notion, if you were here last year in the modeling course, about uh, petri nets and so on. This is the tool you need. It's not a feedback system what we call combinatorial or sequential logical system. For example, that's your washing machine. Consider your washing machine. You have a predefined schedule. You, have, you execute one task, then another one, and a, sec a third one, and so on. So all is scheduled in advance. You have a sequence of tasks you want to achieve, and you start, go on, and you finish. What happens if you have a disturbance in the meantime? then you have to stop, but it will not work with the disturbance, it will not reject the disturbance. You are in an elevator, and the same problem, you press the button, you want to reach a certain level, uh, all is scheduled inside, you have priorities and so on. What happens if you stop between two levels? That's a problem, you just have the emergency button, and that's it. You cannot manage with disturbances. At the opposite, Feedback systems, and this is what we will consider here together. You will enable to maintain specified value or track a trajectory even if your system is subject to disturbances. You're here in the room, you want to obtain 19 degrees, 
and you want to maintain 19 degrees even if you open the window. So opening the window is a disturbance. If it's cold outside or very warm, that will influence the temperature inside the room. Okay? And the, the aim of the control is to maintain this temperature even subject of these disturbances. And this is done due to the feedback notion we will show you right now. And in fact, in this case, the sequence of operation is not known in advance. You cannot pre-schedule all because you have to react in real time to external signal disturbing your system. If all was uh, scheduled in advance, you cannot react to that. So you need flexibility and you need for that, you need feedback. Due to disturbance, if you want to reject disturbance at any time in real time, you need feedback and you need to compare what you want and what you really obtain. If both are not similar, then you have to take action. And this is again the notion of feedback. And this is not the case here, because here all is scheduled in advance. If something gets wrong, you are completely lost, because you cannot react to what happened in real time. So this is one part of systems that exists and that works. It's another field of applications. Here we will only consider feedback systems. Okay. Well, feedback system, what is it? How to consider this? What are the, the tools for uh, feedback systems? First, we will go back to the notion of system. And then uh, we'll show you the structure of continuous and discrete type feedback system. And we will finish with some useful concepts, what we can consider as uh, defining performances to our system how to quantify the goal we want to, to, to reach. Um, when can we say that we have a good control law? That's, what, that's the, 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 the concepts we have to define. Okay, uh, notion of system, some restrictions. We will not consider all potential systems because it's too wide. We just, we have enough to do with dynamical systems first. Of course, we will consider dynamical system here. Uh, dynamical system is when you change your, the behavior, you, you inject a signal to your system, it will react, but not immediately. You will have a transient and the variation will take time. So it's a dynamic of your system. Imagine you're in a boat, you want to change direction, you move, uh, you change the direction, but the boat will move slowly or it depends on the kind of boat you have, <coughs> but it will take some time anyway. So that's what I call dynamical system. It's the opposite of static system. When, when you change the state, it changes immediately. So we will only, all, always and only consider dynamical systems here. And they will be, I mean, for the model, we will consider, we will consider linear or linearized model around an operating point. Your systems and systems you can find everywhere, they are always nonlinear. But modeling the system as a nonlinear, with a nonlinear model, it's very difficult. So, what we will do is that we will consider a linear approximation, or if the linear approximation is too <coughs> not appropriate for all the operating points, we'll consider ranges and have a separate, a different model with different uh, range of applications. For example, the plane, a linearized model you can obtain is not the same if you are at slow speed or high speed. At different altitudes, it changes. So you define different models for different range and you mix, you, you change from one model to another one and you design different kinds of control laws depending on the range you are. That's what is really implemented in planes, uh, the, in control of planes right now. So anyway, we'll consider linear or linearized model. If you cannot linearize your model, uh, if it's not completely or really non-linear, then uh, you need other techniques. You can have, but it's not for this year, because we will only uh, restrict to linear, linear control. Of course, we consider that the system is invariant. 
That means when you have an experience, you apply something to your system at time t, you come back two days ago, two days later, sorry, you apply the same, you will obtain the same result. It's invariant. That's the notion of invariance. Um, that means that, of course, you're, if you do the same many, many times, and if you consider the same experiment one year after, then your system will get older <laughs> and the behavior will not be the same. But we consider that these are slow variation so that we can all uh, continue to keep it as invariant. And at the beginning, uh, with, a non, uh, with the transfer function at least, with state space representation, it will, can be different. For mono we will consider that our system are monovariable or single input, single output. That means that we will have only one control input and only one output. Okay? Of course, you have theories for multi-variable uh, system, multi-input, multi-output system. That's more complex theories. Not for this year. We will only consider that right now. So you have your dynamical system, as I said before. You have some control inputs, and these signals, you are very happy with them because the signals you are manipulating to change the behavior. So these ones are good signals. Then, of course, you have other inputs, which are not so good because they are disturbances. And what you want is to reject these disturbances and to reach the behavior you want to obtain, even with these disturbances. And to do that, what you measure are outputs, or one, if I am in monovariable case, one output. And with this measurement, I will consider this system in the feedback structure so that I can control it. So your system, what can be inside? Which kind of model can you use? The question is, I have one signal, one control signal. I have one output. What is inside? What is the identity card of your system? So here you have the parallel between continuous time and discrete time. If you consider a time domain representation, you have the impulse response. And if you know the input, you can calculate the output just by convolution of this. OK. But uh, computing this, you will have no analytical solution, maybe approximate numerical solution <coughs> to calculate this integral or this series here, but there is no analytical solution. So time response is not really adapted in this case. So we have to move to uh, symbolic representation and symbolic representation you have seen somewhere uh, during some, sometimes during uh, your previous years. These are first the transfer function. The transfer function is very easy to manipulate because you replace the convolution, which was not so easy to calculate, by just a simple product. Either in continuous time, it's the Laplace transform, so S here, or in discrete time, this is the Z transform. I try to use the Laplace transform as S, as maybe you all have n already used this, because you may find P, and in the book it's P, because it's the French uh, representation of the Laplace transform. I think that only in France you use P as the Laplace transform. Almost everywhere it's S. As a, uh, if you consider MATLAB, in the MATLAB software, for example, it's S, as usual. So I try to keep S, but maybe in some I will write P, but just correct me because <laughs> it's uh, the habit I can have. Uh, so based on this transfer function, and we'll have many, many lectures with this uh, concept of transfer function, if you know the input, you calculate the Laplace transform of this signal. If it is a step, you know the Laplace transform of a step or a ramp or whatever. Knowing this, knowing the, lap the transfer function of your system, so this is the identity card of your system, knowing this just by a simple product, you can calculate the Laplace transform of the output. 
and then you go back to the, the, the time domain, the signal in the time domain. So that's really easy to do, either in continuous time or in discrete time with the Z transform. Another representation we will consider at the end, during the last lectures, is the state space representation. Why? First, because the transfer function is really convenient if you are in the monovariable case because you have only one signal here and one signal at the output. If you are in the multivariable case, then you have to consider uh, not transfer function, but matrix of transfer function. So it's very complicated to manipulate. And in this case, state space representation is more adapted. And the other reason is that in some fields of application, you only consider state space representation, no transfer function. Aerospace transportation system, you have mainly you are mainly dealing with state space representation. <coughs> and the same is uh, process engineering, when you are working with bioreactors or whatever. These are state space representation, just because um, the um, the mass balance, the mass equations are all in the time domain using state space representation. So at the end, we will introduce the safe space representation, which is this one in some specific case of invariant linear system, and uh, see what is the specific control strategy in this case. But I've underlined this in green here. This part is the main we will consider, and we will start just after the break with that. Okay? So I guess you have already learned about that in the past. Now, Structure of feedback system. That was the system. So the system here, this one, it will be represented by this block. Imagine it is in transfer function inside. Okay? So you have your system. If you remember the three actions, notion of feedback. Your system, you have to observe, observation. So you have the effect of the action you apply to your system. And through something here, you observe. It was your eye with the sky in mind. Then, this is what you want. You want to reach this goal. This is the signal or the task you want to, to, to reach. You analyze, you compare what, with what you have observed. You analyze, compare what you want and what you have. And based on this, you decide, I should take something. I should do this action. And you decide this. You apply this action, so you remember, you move your legs, and you apply this to your system. And you do that again, again, and again. And if your system is subject to disturbance here, the effect of the disturbance will appear on the measurement, and that will give some difference between what you want, and you will act to reject the disturbance. So the idea is of feedback is, if my system is subject to disturbance, due to the feedback part here, I can compare what I obtain, which is, in fact, an image of the disturbance I have, and I can reject this disturbance. Okay? If my system is not within a feedback uh, scheme, without this, I have no feedback. If I open the loop here, I have no feedback. And I cannot reject disturbance because I'm not aware of this. So this feedback is the crucial notion of uh, what we want to, to control, to learn about control system. So you have here the notion of feedback, and this is the fundamental notion of control theory. And the first task you have to do, I was talking before about modeling, which takes time because you need to have a good model and so on. To have a good model of your system, the main scheme we have is the scheme of block diagram here. So you have your dynamical <coughs> system. I have separated maybe the actuator or it's just maybe one block. But in some application, the actuator is clearly identified. The actuator is the power system that, make we, that will move your dynamical system. For example, when you have a robot, you want to move the robot, the arm of the robot from one point to another one. The actuator is the DC motor or the AC motor. 
that move your, your, uh, your arm. And the dynamical system is the arm by itself. Okay? So in this case, it's clearly separated. But in many other systems, it's just one block, which is the dynamical system, combined with the actuator, is subject to disturbance, and you want to reject the disturbance. Okay? So you have the output, but the output is not directly uh, measurable. You have to measure. You have not the information directly. You have to measure. And to measure this, you need a sensor. So the sensor is the important part of your system. If you, you have uh, a temperature control of something, you want to, to control the temperature of a, of a tank of a, or of a reactor, <coughs> to measure the temperature, you need a thermocouple. So this is the sensor. So you will obtain an image of the temperature, and you will compare with what we call the set point, the trajectory or the value. Uh, for example, I want to obtain 19 degrees in the room. Once again, I know I have some disturbance if I open the window. I measure the temperature with the sensor which gives me the, the temperature of the room. If the temperature is uh, 15 degrees, I will compare with the target, with the set point, which is, which is 19, and I will take some decision. And decision is the controller. And this part, it's the, in the, uh, the part which replaces the human behavior. This is the intelligent part of the control system. This will decide which kind of action can be applied to the system so that the, the observation goes back to the set point you want. And you do that in real time at any time. If you, not, if you notice some difference between the input, the set point, and the measurement here, then you have to take some action. That means that the error signal is not zero. And if the error signal is not zero, you have to go back to zero with nice properties. That should be stable, and what, we will see that after. OK? So th this is the main point. This is a feedback system. You close the loop, and it's a plus and minus. You see? You always compare. You make the difference between both. If the difference is not zero, then you have to take action. And if your sensor is not robust, then you are in open loop, you do not close the loop, and you cannot reject disturbance, which is the main goal of regulation or control. If you're in the, in the case of digital system, so this, this was for cont in the continuous time case. I will go back after the break with uh, the other, uh, the other, the modeling again. But now you are more and more dealing with system which are continuous. That's your physical system. On the other side, you have your con you have your computer, or you have an automator or whatever, and you want to implement the controller on the com in the computer can be a day space card can you, that is used in automotive industry or any other devices. So you have your controller, it's a digital controller. On the left part here, this is the digital part. On the other part here, this is the analog part, this is your system. So you have your continuous process, you have the sensor, this is continuous time signal. Here this is discrete time signal, that means that you have values at different time, which we call the sampling period, and you have to interface both. Here you have a continuous time signal. The computer needs a digital one. So you have to consider a converter, which is an analog to digital converter that will give you values at different time instants. This will be treated by the controller the controller will give you numerical values, but your system needs a continuous time signal. So you have to define what is in between your two numerical values. You have to find again a continuous time signal. And this is the, the goal of the digital to analog converter that will transform a digital signal to an analog one. So this is the opposite action of the other one, and this is done 
with what we call, I call TE, which is a sampling period. So you consider the uh, sampling time, and it's a regular sampling. So at one time, you have one value. You wait for two seconds, for example. You take another one. Two seconds again, you take another one, and so on. OK? So if I consider, I will write some part, just a bit right now. If you consider the ADC controller, so this is the analog to digital control. What you have is you have a continuous time signal, OK? You need to take some values at specific instant to enter this in your computer. And your computer will be scheduled such that the control algorithm will work at this time, specific instant. So based on this, you have to consider that you take one value here, that's, for example, first one, TE. Another one, which is 2TE. Another one. So these are regularly spaced. And TE is the sampling period. And that's your, you have to define this value. We will consider in the future how to do that. But have in mind that when you want to move to digital control, you need to transform a signal which is continuous from your system to be treated in the computer in a discrete time signal. And this has been to be done designing or choosing what is called a sampling period. And the opposite, if you consider the digital to analog converter, this is the opposite because what you obtain from the computer, what I've written u of k here, you have some values. You have one value here at te. You have another value here at 2 te and another one here, etc. OK? So here, when you sample your, your signal, you lose information in between, because you just consider, you focus on specific points. Here, you have these points, and you need to find again what is in between. But it's not so easy to do, because you have, lose, you have lost the information before. So the, the only way to do that, or the, what is in commercial devices, when you buy uh, a, a con converters, usually it's the same uh, formulation. You just hold the value, and you wait for another point. You hold the value again, you wait, and so on. So you obtain a piecewise continuous signal, which is like this. Of course, it's not exactly the same as the signal you have at the beginning, but you cannot do uh, in another way because you have lost the information in between. All right? So this is the goal of the interface. And when you consider a computer, you say, well, I, my system, I want to compute the control, in a, to have the control in a computer. It's very easy. I just have to buy one computer and that it works. Not, not so easy because you need converters. You need to buy an I.O. card and you need to define a sampling period, and that's part of the, of the problem. Okay? So we will, just as an, uh, an introduction, have this in mind for the future. And, of course, the digital controller can be derived from the continuous, so you start with the design of a continuous controller, and then you transform it in a digital way, <coughs> such that it can be implemented in a computer. That's what we will do this year. But next year or in the future, if you continue in control, you can find some control strategies that are only in the discrete time with no equivalent in continuous time, such as predictive control or adaptive control or robust control. You have many advanced controls that have no equivalent in continuous time, special for discrete time. That's what, not what we will do, but that exists. So. With this, what I represented here, let's summarize on this slide. If you consider success, the succession of first a sampler, analog to digital converter, and then the opposite action just after digital to analog converter. Both together, it's nonsense, but you will have this in control. So you have a continuous time signal, you, dis you sample it, that's the sampler, and then you, the, you have this transformation. This is called the zero-order hold. Zero-order hold. 
or the same, z z zero or the whole, that means that you consider that the signal between two samples is the same. So you, you block the value, you hold the value between two samples. This is the goal of these devices. So if you consider this signal, the first sampler, you have these black points here, and with the zero order hold, you obtain the green signal. And you see the green signal is quite different from the blue, which was the initial one. Of course, if the sampling period is very small, it's not so far because you have many, many more points. So the interpolation is not so difficult to do when you, you hold the signal, it's very small. So that depends on the choice of the sampling period. And the, what we use usually is a linear approximation of the combination of these two blocks. This is the, the red signal which cross the, 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 this value here in the middle. This is the best linear approximation of the combination of the two blocks. And this is the same as the blue one, but delayed by a sampling, half a sampling period. So the best linear approximation of this, the sampler and the zero or the hold is a time delay of half a sampling period. This is an approximation to remain linear because it's, it's not invariant and it's not linear otherwise, this transformation. If we want to remain linear, this is the best approximation we can do. But the problem is, if these two blocks are approximated by a time delay of half a sampling period, which is exponential, so you cannot see maybe, it's exponential minus Te over 2s. So there is a minus just between. And not so easy to see here. But the equivalent term is exponential minus Te over 2 times s. So this is a time delay of half a sampling period, okay? And what is the problem of a time delay? As a magnitude, it's just one. But the phase is negative. So you will decrease the stability of the system. Just have this in mind again, we will consider in the future. But it's not so uh, easy to implement a control structure due to the converters. And the converters can be approximated like this, but these, are, these they have an, an influence on the performance of the system. So that will decrease the loop stability, as we will see in the future. Uh, I will maybe uh, just give a few um, ideas about this, how to model continuous, uh, how to model this, you have your system, which is modeled by a transfer function, and you have the environment of the converters. And when you are in discrete time, what you want to obtain, it's the equivalent of these three blocks. What is the equivalent discrete time model of these three blocks in the Z domain? So if you consider the, co the process, which is represented by G, it's a continuous time process, G S. You have the converter, digital to analog converter. And at the end, the analog to digital converter. And you want to obtain a, a digital model, a numerical model of these three blocks. All, way, all these three blocks together. It's nonsense to have only two or one. You need these three blocks because you need to convert to, con to have your system and to convert again. But what is the equivalent model in discrete time? because we, went, we will imp implement this in discrete time. To obtain the transfer function here, as you have seen before, the transfer function is the, or the Z transform of the impulse response. So the impulse response is obtained if you apply to the input an impulse signal. If I apply to the input here an impulse signal, then the output will be the impulse response. And the Z transform of this response 
will give you the Z-transform of the transfer function. So if you consider starting here, this is my impulse. You just have one and it's zero everywhere. This is the impulse signal. I apply this signal to the converter. What is the result? You have this signal, the first point is one. Waiting for the other one, you hold the value and then you go back to zero and that's zero after that at any time. So this is the output UT, output of the zero order hold. This is the red value here. This can be seen as the difference between two step signal. Gamma is the step, so it's gamma of t minus the same but delayed with a sampling period and you go back to zero. So this is the, the form gamma t minus gamma t minus t e which is u applied to the continuous process. So you obtain the step response, you apply this to your system, you obtain y and then you sample again. And this is the impulse response. I will not detail all the calculation, but here you have the sample, re sam the, the discrete response. If you take the Z transform of this, you obtain the transfer function. Have in mind, I don't know if you remember, the Z in terms of signal. If you have a signal X of T, you sample it, you obtain a signal which is a discrete one XK. Okay? It's just in the case of its sample, it's the value of the sampling period KTE. If you consider the same, but the sample X at time K minus one, so the sample before, what is the difference between uh, in the Z with the Z transfer, uh, transform? So if you linked XK to XZ, XK minus one will be not directly XZ, but you have a, a one sample delay, which is Z minus one. Z minus one, it's a, a sample, the, the image of the sample, which is the sample before. So if you consider the difference between k and k minus one, that explains the term one minus z minus one. So finally, what you need to have in mind, and if you are not, um, if you have some problem with this understanding, just ask me, I will go into more details. But what you, you have to know is that to find the equivalent of these three blocks, the z transform of these three blocks is in the Z domain, one minus Z minus one, the Z transform of GS over S. You can forget the, 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 the way to arrive to this if you want, but this you need to, because that's the starting point. You know the, Z trans, the Laplace transform of your system, the continuous one, you have GS, you calculate GS over S, and then you have tables of the Z transform, and you consider these tables, and with this table, you obtain, you multiply by one minus Z minus one and you obtain the Z transform. But it's always the transform, transformation of these three blocks. I mean, these two, the contribution of these two blocks in addition to that, that explain why we divide it by S and why we have this in before, in addition. So you need to have this in mind to calculate and uh, to use the table, but to use the, approximate, the, the correct transfer function to calculate the Z-transform. We will go back to this during the modeling uh, part after that. Okay, some useful concepts <coughs> now, just to finish. And then we have the break. Um, what I say is I, I introduced the, the concept of feedback system. So what I said is, I want to control my system so that if I open the window, for example, I have to go back to the correct temperature, that means that the, the error should go to zero with nice properties. And these nice properties, in fact, you have three. And this is the credo of the control engineer. 
First one is stability. Stability, there are two aspects. First one is, if your system is unstable, you first have to stabilize your system. That, was, that is the case of the plane, or that is the case of the inverse pendulum. It's an unstable system, you need to have stability. And once in stabilized, you have to have good level, a good level of stability. That means if the error will go to zero, <coughs> you will have to go to zero without too many oscillations. <coughs> that was the problem of the robot arms, you remember, with the imaging device. If you move this device, you want to stabilize without oscillations. Otherwise, it, doesn't, it is not um, useful. So stability, that's the main property. We want to obtain stability. Then, rapidity. I said the error should go to zero. OK, but if it takes one hour, it's not good. Or it depends, of course. In some case, if you have a biological system, it can be uh, hours and days. And if you have a motor, it's my milliseconds. So it depends, but it should be quite fast. So the rapidity, you need to guarantee that the dynamic behavior uh, will provide the correct settling time. It will not be too long according to the properties, the natural properties of your system. So that's what I, I represent here. You need to have a good damping and the response should go quite fast. Of course, rapidity is subjective, it's linked to the, the behavior of your system. And finally, you need to control accuracy. It can be steady state or dynamic accuracy so that you decrease the error and the error should be zero. When you want to obtain 19 degrees in the room, you should go to 90 degrees and not 18.5 or not 19.5. That's 18. No error. That's accuracy. That I, I've represented here. You have your set point and the output should reach the same. You have here no error. Okay? So what you need Finally, and that will be the, the purpose of the design for, the, for, you, for you in the future for the controllers, is stability, rapidity, accuracy. That could be simple. In fact, it's not. Because the problem is that you should always consider a compromise between stability on one side and rapidity and accuracy on the other side. It depends on the controller. You can improve this compromise, but if you want to go fast, you will not be completely stable, or you, the level of stability will not be so good. You may have some oscillation. If you want to be very, very stable without overshoot here, without, uh, with a good damping, you will penalize the, the rapidity. And accuracy will work as well. In a, it's a kind of compromise. And hopefully, it's not so simple. Otherwise, we do not need control engineers. So you, that will be your job to do that and to find the best control law to fulfill, to, to find the best compromise between stability, rapidity, and accuracy. And that's what we will learn together. And finally, just to conclude and to summarize what we have seen. You have learned now, you know, <coughs> you have already a nice concept when you start one hour and a half before. You know now, that's feedback systems. We will only consider feedback systems or closed loop system. That's the same. You remember, you close the loop. That's the feedback. Systems are linear or nonlinear. And we will consider linear model or linearized model. And we will speak about continuous or discrete time domain. Your system in continuous, you can control it in a continuous framework or you can implement the control on the computer and that will be discrete time domain or digital control. And we will see both. <coughs> now, um, uh, two concepts, uh, they are quite link, very uh, linked in fact. When you speak in terms of tracking, tracking is you want to follow a specified trajectory. For example, you have to follow, uh, for a, a missile, you have to follow something moving. In this case, of course, you still have stability, rapidity, accuracy. But you highlight mainly rapidity or velocity. You have to track something. <coughs> of course, again, with stability and accuracy. 
And that's the case of machine tools, robots. When you move the robot from one point to another one, the trajectory is planned. And what you want is to go fast, but with nice properties uh, of stability, of course. So that's the case of robot, radar, uh, application in aerospace, and so on. Now, a kind of distinction is what is regulation? Regulation is a special case of tracking when you track something which is constant. I mean, having the 19 degrees in the room, always 19, even if you open the, the window. This is regulation. You want to regulate the temperature or to control, but we speak in terms of regulation because we maintain the set point at 19. And in this case, what is really important is, in fact, steady state accuracy. You want to have the good temperature, so that accurate, to maintain the constant value, whatever the, the environment influence can be. <coughs> Example, and this is a really uh, the main industrial problem. You find a lot of uh, problem in industry. You have temperature control uh, of the room. Uh, you have uh, pressure control, flow control, uh, level control in a tank, velocity and flux control of motor, uh, torque control, traction of stickness, that's what you have in uh, rolling industry with Arcelor, for example, when you're, do you want to control the thickness of a slab uh, in me with metal slabs, you have uh, to, to have traction and thickness control, voltage and frequency uh, with electricity application and so on. So this is a really important part of control, but it's mainly what we call regulation because we want to maintain whatever happened outside. Okay. That's it for this part. We have a break now. And uh, just after the break, we continue. And then we'll have more mathematical aspects after that. I will need the, the board. <laughs>